What is going on, everybody? It is Thursday, I think. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> it's a weird week. I don't have to pay attention to days anymore. Uh, Thursday, March 29th. We've got a five-game slate for the NBA tonight. I assume no one really cares because uh, today is the first day of baseball. But I'm not going to turn my back on my loyal listeners, so got to do an NBA video to start the morning off. Only five games, not a lot of awesomeness out there either when it comes to uh, fun plays, but there's a couple weird things that we want to take a look at, um, so let's just get into it. Uh, first up, we've got Pistons hosting the Wizards, 106.75 implied total for the Pistons. I have them as two and a half point favorites at home versus the Wizards. This line is not out yet. Um, but starting it off, you know, not a bad matchup. Um, Wizards have been pretty good against shooting guards. That's really my only major, major concern. Uh, I think that Drummond looks solid at 9,400 on both sites. Um, I think that there is a little bit of upside still in that number. He went for 69. <laughs> nice. Um, what was that? A week ago? Five days ago? Um, so they're coming in on a decent amount of rest, which should help in that scenario. Uh, I have no problem running out Drummond, particularly on this five-game slate. Blake Griffin at 8,500. Um, 8,800 on DK, which is really not appealing. But last two games in the mid-20s, only playing low-20s minutes. Um, I would use caution if I were going to use Blake. I think he grades out pretty well if you think... Uh, if you think he gets his normal allotment of minutes, which I do. Um, but at the same time, you know, be wary that there could be a cut in his minutes and he'll have trouble hitting value um, if he doesn't get those minutes. Uh, Reggie Bullock, not a ton of interest there. Um, he just doesn't really do enough for me. I can see taking a flyer on him in GPPs, but he would likely be relatively low-owned. And then Reggie Jackson, um, slowly but surely getting his minutes ramped up, went for 28 minutes uh, a couple nights ago in his, his most recent game, put up 29 fantasy points. At that price, 5300 on FanDuel, 4800 on DK. Uh, I definitely think he's worth a flyer. I've got him in for 27 minutes right now, but if they ramp that up even a little bit, it's a pretty good level. Uh, for that price point. So I'd entertain some Reggie Jackson. I think Drummond would be my priority coming out of uh, the Pistons. And then, I don't know, little, very little bits of Blake and Reggie Bullock. Now, the Wizards is where it gets weird. Um, John Wall is questionable for tonight. Um, I've got him in for 25 minutes, and this is a very similar situation to Kevin Love a week or so ago when he came back. He's currently priced at minimum salary on FanDuel. So if Wall does come back and does have that sort of 25-minute limit, I think he's an amazing play um, at minimum salary on FanDuel. Grades out perfectly. For you DraftKings guys, uh, 7,100 on DraftKings. Can't touch him at all. But keep an eye on that to see if he gets ultimately ruled in. And if he does, uh, you definitely want to have a part of him on FanDuel. Now, uh, for Beal, 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DK. Um, I don't love it. Hasn't been very good lately. Lots of games in the mid-20s. Um, they've been a little bit more balanced lately. So for Beal... Um, I'd be more interested in Porter, oddly enough. Um, but Beal, Porter, and Markeef, um, I would only want small doses of those guys. Markeef, I'm a little bit more interested in, but I don't see a ton of solid value in their prices. So, little bits of Beal, Porter, and Morris. Um, if you can get if we get news on John Wall, you definitely want to go down that direction in FanDuel. For the Heat, Heat are hosting the Bulls. 112 implied total is tied for first. They are 13-point favorites at home. Um, 
Whiteside, I can't remember if he's questionable or just expected to play. I think he's questionable. Yes. Uh, Whiteside is questionable, so I have him in for right now for 25 minutes. That trims um, a lot of the value from James Johnson, takes it all away from Kelly Olynyk basically at that price. Uh, makes it a little bit tougher to get to Justice Winslow as well. So here, uh, I'd be looking at Drogic, 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. I'd, I'd go down that path a little bit. Um, you could talk me into a little bit of Josh Richardson, although 6,200 is a little higher than what I normally like. Um, I don't have a necessarily a problem with it. And then uh, I think a flyer on Tyler Johnson is fine. Sometimes he puts up some big games at 4,700 or 4,400. I think he's worth a, a, a decent shot in a, in a GPP scenario. Um, when we only have five games and you know, you're playing the Bulls, uh, it makes everyone on the team look a little bit more interesting than they should. Um, so nobody stands out in this game as, you know, any sort of must-have type plays. You just need to really keep an eye on Whiteside's news. If he ends up being out, um, you know, it brings Kelly Olenek and James Johnson back into some semblance of play. But if Whiteside has to play 25 minutes... Um, you know, those 25 minutes have to come from somewhere. And uh, while I think that a lot of them would come from Jordan Mickey, I don't think that they all will. So something to keep in mind there. Um, little bits of everybody on the Heat is fine. The matchup's exceptional. So I don't, I don't get the sense that you'd be too upset. But nobody grades out as like an incredible value. For the Bulls, 99 point implied total, which is right now... Uh, dead last, or no, not dead last. I'm, I'm bad at uh, reading. Uh, it's ninth, actually. Uh, they are one point ahead of the hapless Sacramento Kings. So 13-point underdogs in Miami. Not a ton to go wild about here. Bulls have really been spreading out the minutes, and um, that makes it hard to really focus on anyone. Uh, I think that David Nawaba and Cam Payne both work as uh, value plays on FanDuel. A little bit tougher to pull that off on DK. Uh, I think that you could probably take a look at Markinen if he's going to play at 5,500, just because I would expect a lot of the offense to run towards him um, if he's on the floor. So if you see that Markinen is in, I think a $5,500 price point is a solid value for him. But really, I think these grades are pretty realistic for the Bulls situation today. Lots of guys that are just sort of meh, and you could take it or leave it. Um, you know, Miami's solid on D. This is probably a, a below average matchup for the Bulls, even just from a defensive standpoint. So use caution with everybody here. You don't want anybody in large doses. Um, but Nawaba, Payne, Markinen, I think, look like the best values uh, for Chicago. Now for the Spurs, 105.5 implied total. I have them as three-point favorites at home against the Thunder. This is with the assumption that LaMarcus Aldridge does play. Um, as of right now, I, he is questionable. Um, they saw no structural damage in the MRI, so I'm going to move forward with the assumption that he's playing, particularly in a game that uh, is, is gigantic for them. Uh, they could really use a win at home in this sort of scenario. Um, now, with that said, Aldridge at 8,900. Not really my favorite play on a, on a bum knee. I know he's been playing a little bit better lately, but I think the price is slightly inflated. Uh, 9,000 on DK is even more difficult. But I see a lot more downside risk. Um, so just think of it like... You know, I would expect him to put up 41.9 on a perfect world, but there's a lot more risk to go lower than that um, than there previously would be. So for me, I'm probably not going to have much of any Aldridge. Uh, I just don't trust it. And if you get any news that he is out, um, you know, that'll probably make someone like Bertans a little bit more interesting. 
Um, maybe Rudy Gay a little bit more interesting. But for now, we have to assume that Aldridge is in. Um, I'd be willing to take a look at DeJounte Murray, 5,700 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. I think there's um, some upside in Murray's number. Uh, if he can get into the 30s or, you know, he put up 43 uh, a couple weeks ago in 34 minutes. His minutes yo-yo all around. If you catch one of those days where they're gigantic, uh, it could be a big Murray game. So I like Murray in, in a GPP format. And then uh, Patty Mills, I'd be willing to entertain 4,500. He's hopped from 32 points to 6 points to 30 points. So I'm cool with it. Uh, but, you know, just... Don't forget when you're doing it that it's Patty Mills and the Spurs, and that's a double-headed monster of things that could go wrong in torpedo fantasy value. Um, so yeah, Murray would be my only real focus coming out of here with Mills sprinkled in. Uh, I don't really have a lot of interest in Anderson or Danny Green or Rudy Gay, although Rudy Gay at 4,000 if you need that sort of punt play. On FanDuel, I think that you can get there, but he's not playable on DK. Now, for Oklahoma City, um, I have them at the 8th highest implied total. Tough matchup. Spurs are solid on D. They really limit fantasy points uh, on a per-possession basis. Um, But we have Paul George at 7,700 on FanDuel, 7,900 on DK. Um, Not the best stretch for his last two, but has had two games in the 40s uh, in the last two weeks. At 7,700, I think that, well, one, I think Oklahoma City, you know, cares about this game and wants to win. So I would expect George to get his full allotment of time. And two, uh, at 7,700, I think that's just some value. So I think George looks like a really good option uh, just because of his price tonight. Speaking of guys with good prices... Uh, Russell Westbrook, 11-2 on FanDuel, 11-4 on DraftKings. Um, you know, put up 55 in his last two games. That's right around where you need him anyway. Uh, I love that price for Russ. Um, while the Spurs are good defensively uh, against point guards, um, sometimes you just need to play the math. And I think that the math on a night like tonight um, says... You know, you could probably get a decent amount of Russell Westbrook in uh, at 11-2. Steven Adams, 6,900 and 6,800. I don't really have an issue with it. He needs 35 for value. He's had two 42-point games in the last week and a half, a 56-point game in the last week and a half. Um, I assume that he's way too strong for Pow if Pow is on the floor. And, uh, you know, a bulky LaMarcus Aldridge isn't going to be um, maybe as sturdy as he normally would. So I definitely would have some interest in having some Stephen Adams. I know he doesn't grade out the best here, but I think that would be worth a shot. Uh, And then finally, Carmelo. Not been playing great, but 5,300 on FanDuel. You always have to sort of be ready for Melo to put up a game like he did on March 13th for 34 fantasy points. Um this doesn't strike me as the best matchup for him I would likely be pretty muted for him but I think that he's worth a flyer in a GPP similar sort of scenario for Corey Brewer at 4400 I think he's worth a flyer in a GPP only now for the Kings the Kings are 98 or they are seven and a half point underdogs at home against Indiana, 98-point implied total, which is 10th. Just really bad team, Uh, absolutely atrocious, Uh, really thinning out the minutes and spreading them out, so it's making guys look a little bit less appealing. Um, I'd take a look at Bogdan on FanDuel at 4,300. You know, the minutes are there. There's a lot of upside in that number, but after that... um, I don't see anyone really of value. Maybe Scal at 5,500, uh, but that's probably that's probably it. Um, I guess Costa Kufos at 3,900 can be worth a flyer on FanDuel. Um, you know he's been putting up okay numbers 
on a per minute basis. Went for 55 a couple nights ago. Um, but you know, Sacramento doesn't have. It's not the best defensive matchup. Indiana has been really solid. Their most difficult point guard matchup, most dif- their third most difficult small forward, second most difficult power forward. Like, there's just no reason to get cute here. Um, if you want to use anybody, you know, I'd recommend probably Bogdan just for the value or Scal. You know, Willie Cauley Stein on DK, but you're more likely to be disappointed by the Kings than, uh, than happy when all is said and done. Now, the Pacers. Pacers with a 105.5 implied total, uh, tied for fourth. Um, amazing matchup. And we've got Victor Oladipo at 8,800 on FanDuel, 8,500 on DK. On a night when there's not a ton of awesomeness to pay up for, I think Victor Oladipo is in a great spot. Went for 45 in his last game, so, you know, solid outing. Should see a good amount of time. You know, Pacers still have something to play for. They're playing for seeding. Uh, and there's just nothing on Sacramento that is terrifying. If he's going to get, like, Buddy Heald guarding him or something, he's going to, he's going to roast him. So I like Victor Oladipo a lot tonight. He, he'll be, I hope, one of my higher-owned guys when all is said and done. That's the second time I've said that. I need to get uh, more creative with my verbiage, but I haven't had any of the black elixir yet. Screaming hot. Normally I drop a chunk of ice in it so that I can actually drink it immediately, but I didn't do that. So now it's just uncomfortably hot. Those damn Yeti mugs. They're too good at their job. Uh, Miles Turner, 6,600 on FanDuel. That would be something that I would love to entertain. Um, this is a guy that gets up into the mid-30s, and at 6,600, you know has the ability to pop off into the 40s with the best night. And against the Kings, I think that's a great fit for him. Um, Third most advantageous matchup against centers. I'll have a little bit of Turner at center. I'll have a little bit of Bojan and Darren Collison, too. Um, Indiana, I, I like the Indiana pricing a little bit more than I like the Heat pricing for two teams that are sort of in a similar situation playing playing teams that suck. So I'd likely, I would want to have a little bit more Indiana than I would Miami. Final game on the slate, the Golden State Warriors hosting the Milwaukee Bucks. And we are lucky enough to get Draymond Green and Kevin Durant back tonight. Or at least that's uh, that's the plan for right now. So Warriors are 8-point favorite. I have the Warriors as 8-point favorites at home. Uh, tied for first with a 112 implied total. Uh, this line is not out yet, but... I'm figuring somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, Quinn Cook at 5,700 would be somebody that I would have some interest in if he's going to get a high allotment of minutes and have two guys back that are, uh, you know, good. Uh, that could be good for his just like assist numbers. Um, might be able to get a couple cleaner looks too. So no problems using Quinn Cook. Uh, Draymond at 8,500 is a little concerning to me coming back after missing a couple days. I don't hate it, but. He's not, like, the biggest value play for me. Now, Durant, 10-8 on FanDuel, 10-8 on DK. Um, hasn't played since March 14th. He's going to need 55-plus for you to be happy. I have a hard time believing he gets there coming back off of an injury. I know that he grades out well here, but... For me, I'll try to be a little bit muted. I want to do some research and some reading today uh, to see how much people are going to be on Durant. Um, His ownership will play, or my expectation of his ownership will play a large role in sort of what direction I want to go with him. Um, I'm willing to do a a full fade on Durant if I think he's going to be owned too much just because I'm always wary about guys coming back off of injuries. Uh, Other than that, on Golden State, um, I don't really have much interest in anybody else. They spread the minutes out too much, so nobody really is going to get any big chunks of stuff, especially with Draymond and Durant back. Finally, we've got the Bucks. Uh, 104 implied total would be my prediction, which would be 7th for the night. Um, You know, Giannis at 11-2, I'd be 
uh, I have some interest in. 10-6 on DK, absolutely. Uh, I would imagine that just because of where some of the value is tonight, um, you know, I could, I'll could i probably see a decent amount of Giannis popping up in the optimizer, but we'll find that out in a couple minutes. Um, Middleton and Bledsoe are both you know coin flip guys for me. I don't have any issue having either one of them. I think that um, I would probably prefer Middleton tonight. Uh, I think that he'll probably have a little bit easier of a road. So if I had to pick between the two, I would probably lean Middleton. Um, and then I think John Henson, 5,100 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK, uh, has the potential to be a, a, a nice value. It's a guy that gets gets himself into the 30s from time to time, which could be you know around 6x on FanDuel. I'd, I'd be more than happy with that on a five-game slate. Uh, so my focus would be Giannis, Middleton, and uh, Henson. I don't have any problems having a little bit of bled, so... Uh, I think Milwaukee looks pretty good here, getting a, a thinned-out Warriors team with two guys coming back from injuries. So that's where I'm at for now. Um, let's hop over to the to Fantasy Cruncher and check out what pops up on this optimizer. It's a really unique slate. Not the same sort of overtly chalky guys that you would expect. Now, for sure, John Wall is going to be popping up here uh, like gangbusters. Um, he'll probably be in 80% of these lineups, so be prepared for that. Not close. Right, he's working on it. A lot of Bogdan, a lot of Russ, a lot of Wall, a lot of Drummond, a lot of Nawaba. I never changed the... I never changed the randomness. I'm not used to the new feature. Change all players. Yes. There we go. That'll make it look a little bit better. Yeah, a lot of Drummond, a lot of Giannis, a lot of Russ. Way too much Aldridge, in my opinion. That'll be something that I'll probably tweak down a bit uh, as the day goes on. But let's just say we do use wall and uh, we do use Russ. I'd like to go to Giannis. And if I grab Paul George, where what what are my options? Who that might be too aggressive. I'd entertain this last one. Uh, these other two make me a little nervous. Maybe I could walk back Russ. That's just so much Drummond. Let's remove that filter. What do the Steven Adams lineups look like? Now that's one I would entertain. Russ, Wall, Oladipo, Bogdan, Paul George, Josh Richardson, Markeith Morris, Markinen, and Adams. That looks like one of a like a weird lineup that would win a GPP. I know that sounds like that's weird, you know, it's you don't pick lineups out of 20,000 and say that'll look like that, but it just, it has like the right balance of like guys from different teams that it stands out to me. I don't know. FanDuel looks like it's going to be difficult tonight. That wall news will be essential. If we know he's going to play 25 minutes, you got to smash him at, uh, at 3,500. Kevin Love paid dividends in that scenario last week. All right, let's crank out DraftKings, and we will be on our way. At least there's no wall here. This will look a little bit better. Lots of Tyler Johnson. DraftKings, 4,400. Something to pay attention to. All right, so my priorities here, Giannis, Drummond, and Drogic. So... Let's grab Giannis first. I think that Eric Bledsoe would be a nice grab as well. That gets me out of the Bucks sort of derby. We need to grab Tyler Johnson. I think that Miles Turner would be an interesting look. 
And then we'll grab DeJounte Murray. Let's see what we've got. Nope, no issues with the first one. Jackson, Johnson, Richardson, Portis, Turner, Murray, Giannis, Bledsoe. Um, I don't have any issues with any of the lineups that are on the screen right now. I think they would shake out pretty well uh, for DraftKings, knowing what we know right now. So that's it, guys. I know that was quick, um, but five games slayed on a day where no one cares about basketball, except for degenerates like me. Um, I'll be around all day. Feel free to hit me up with any questions you might have, whether that's uh, in the comments section or uh, on Twitter. Uh, head to awesomemo.com, URL at the top, uh, for all of our content for today. It's going to be a really big day for us. Uh, we'll have basketball content out like we normally have. Uh, we're going to have a ton of baseball content coming out today. Um, so we're really ramping up uh, to get ourselves started. Um, we're shooting for Monday to be the official launch of our YouTube channel. Uh, last Yesterday and today, calling this sort of the soft launch. Um, when we do go live 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 on monday for our, our youtube content uh, it's going to look a little bit different we're going to have um some extra people involved it's not just going to be uh, my talking head any longer we're going to have um we're going to be bringing in guests we're going to be having some back and forth it's going to be like a like a big boy podcast I'm, I'm, I'm getting called up to the big leagues for it now finally so get stay tuned for that we're going to have a lot of people popping in and out for them um, you guys are going to get a lot of content moving forward. I'm really excited about it. So, like I said, if you guys have any questions, you know, please feel free to reach out. Uh, please like and subscribe this video if you are happy with it. Uh, we're really trying to build up that subscriber base. Um, so every little bit helps for us there. And uh, I will talk to you guys um, a little bit later. Good luck tonight.